Hi, I'd like to offer you a bit more explanation about life estates. Freehold Life Estates. The word estate refers to the degree, quantity, nature, and extent of the interest, ownership rights, a person can have in real property. Estates are divided into two groups, freehold and leasehold estates. A freehold estate is ownership for an indefinite length or unknown duration. A leasehold, also called a non-freehold estate, is for a fixed or known duration. Freehold estates include, freehold estates are either a fee simple estate or a life estate. Fee simple estates can be sold or willed or inherited. Whereas a life estate is given for the span of a person's life, meaning they have use of it for their entire life, but cannot themselves dispose of the property. Life estate. Life estates are a form of freehold estate. Conventional life estates are created by action of the grantor. The grantor extends use of the property to the holder of the life estate based on the span of someone's life. The lifespan it is based upon may or may not be the holder of the life estate. It may be based on that of a third party. For example, a grandfather may grant a life estate to the mother of his grandchild for the lifetime of the grandchild. The life estate ends when the life it is based upon ends. The holder of the life estate does not have the right of disposition. The grantor of the life estate established what would happen to the property once the life estate has ended. A life estate might be used by a husband or a spouse for a wife or a spouse with children as a remainderman. A life estate is one way to avoid probate because the children's interest in the property transfers when the life estate is created, not at the spouse's death that the estate is based upon. Ownership is conveyed by deed. The deed includes language giving the tenant life estate rights. While the parent is alive, the children cannot dispose of the property. A reversionary life estate has been established if the person who created the life estate asserts that use of the property is to be returned to the person that created it. A remainder man estate has been established if upon the conclusion of the life estate, the property passed to a third person or persons. So a conventional life 
life estate is created by the action taken by the grantor of the life estate when they created the life estate. However, there is another type of life estate that is created by law rather than by action of a grantor. This is called a legal life estate. Legal life estates. Legal life estates are created automatically by law. Homesteaded property creates a legal life estate for the property owners and the spouses of the owners. If a person dies without having provided for his or her spouse through a will to have ownership of the homesteaded property, then a legal life estate may be granted to the surviving spouse. This allows the surviving spouse to remain in the home even if there is debt or a will that deems the property willed to another. Basically, this means that if a property is owned by only one spouse, but the property has been homesteaded, then the spouse that is not on the deed has a right to the property as a legal life estate. This provides both spouses protection from creditors, and if the spouse that owns the property dies, the remaining spouse cannot be forced out of the home. Protection from creditors. If a property has been homesteaded, the property is protected from certain creditors. General creditors cannot force the sale of a homesteaded property. However, debts related to the home, such as with a mortgage or a mechanics lien, can result in the loss of the home if unpaid. Legal Life Estate I find that a story helps with the understanding of a legal life estate. Let's say that Maxwell and Margaret met in their later years. They both had homes and grown children from previous marriages. Maxwell, being a responsible father, had drawn up a will many years before that, leaving all of his possessions to his children in the event of his death. Maxwell meets Margaret and falls madly in love. They marry. Margaret sells her home and moves in with Maxwell. Many years before that, Maxwell had declared the home his homestead by having filed paperwork with the county. Maxwell and Margaret lived there happily for a month. Unfortunately, Maxwell dies unexpectedly from a heart attack. Also, unfortunately, Maxwell hadn't taken time to update his will, so all his possessions had been left to his children, according to his will. After the funeral, Maxwell's adult children tell Margaret that she has to immediately move out of the home as they are selling it. But the children are wrong. Margaret invokes her right to the property as being a legal life estate and... She remains happily on the property until her death. Upon Margaret's death, all her possessions transferred by will to her own children. She left Maxwell's children nothing. After all, they had been so unkind to her after Maxwell's death. Upon meeting with the probate lawyer, Margaret's children discovered that it was Maxwell's children who owned the house as remaindermen and now had the right to sell it.